my baby. She got a wiggle and a walk and a sweet southern draw away. She made me talk out of my baby. Let me be your man. Well, the way you could love it, we could be more than friends. So, Mr. Ben Rice. How's it going, Tom? It's going really well. I've been following you for a while. A uh, young man uh, kind of bringing up the blues uh, for your generation. Uh, how would you get started in the blues? You know, um, so I first started, started guitar when I was five. And uh, my dad had this old nylon string guitar. And he'd come home from the bar, and he'd pick it up. And he'd strum out, you know, he knew like maybe two chords to like an old Marshall Tucker song. And me and my brothers and uh, would all sit around and watch him, you know, try to strum out the song. And uh, I remember being just amazed by the sound of this guitar. And uh, so I'd try to pick it up and try to figure out what he was playing. And then uh, when I was seven, my dad bought me my first guitar. And before that, we had the nylon string guitar and my brother had another guitar that I would steal from him every now and then. And so I got, I got a guitar and I got guitar lessons. And my dad told me, he goes, well, as long as you keep on going, I'll keep paying for your lessons. And so I went through college playing guitar. I went to college for guitar. And so um, I, I kind of feel bad for him now. I'm mm. sure he regrets that, but when I started, my guitar teacher would give me these these like jam tracks to play to. And he noticed that I liked the, the bluesy ones, the slower ones. And so he, he told me, he said, you should check out B.B. King, or you should check out Stevie Ray Vaughan. You know, it sounds like you might really like these styles. And so that's what I did. And then after a while, I was like, well, who else is there? Mm -hmm. And I learned about Eric Clapton, and then I was like, kept on going farther back and Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf and Robert Johnson. And then when I was like 14 and 15, I s kind of became a little blues historian mm -hmm. uh, because for me it was one of those things where it's like the more you know, the more you want to know. Uh, and it slowly 
crept up and took over all of my listening, uh, musical listening, and, and that's all I was doing uh, when I was a teenager. Let's go fishing down at the lake. Oh, children, let's go fishing down at the lake. Well, I heard they done stopped it the day before yesterday. Jumping in the boat. You know, I heard, I heard they're jumping in the boat. Well, I know he can catch them fishing from the shore. Sunrise to 
day's gonna be So what were your main influences? Uh, you know, it's funny, I, uh, the first guitar sound I ever remember thinking like, that's, that's a, like a, a, a special sound mm -hmm. was, uh, my, my dad had an old Carlos Santana, like greatest hits cassette. Mm -hmm. And uh, listening to that cassette was, was a, like a very like, very like, powerful thing to, to hear and to connect with. And then B.B. Uh, King, of course, and I used to, I used to uh, hunt thrift stores for like CDs and tapes and stuff, and I found like four Robert Cray cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so he was a big influence too, because I was like, well, Ro Robert Cray, like that's like the only blues music I have is, you know, like, like these four cassettes of Robert Cray that you know I wore out. Uh, so Robert Cray and BB King and Steve Ray Vaughan was a big influence mm -hmm. early on too. Um, and then you know, like I said, you know, you kind of start going going back and listening to everybody else. You know, Muddy Waters and mm -hmm. and Howlin' Wolf and R.L. Burnside. Uh, but I also believe you know that everything you hear kind of creeps into your playing uh, by osmosis too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I find myself referencing a lot of different stuff. Uh, you know, and I'm, always, I'm always smiling about how my parents' music creeps into some of my playing too. Because uh, my parents had two very different collections of music in their cars growing up. Mm -hmm. And my dad's truck, we listened to people like Marshall Tucker and Dallas Cooper and uh, the Tubes and Bob Marley. <laughs> and then my mom's car, we listened to people like Al Green and the Isley Brothers and Luther Vandross. And so uh, whenever I'm writing, I'm, I'm always like listening and trying to hear, trying to search, trying to, to dig. And it, I, always, I always catch myself being like, oh, that's how, that, that's how that song goes. Like, oh, that's how, you know, Searching for a Rainbow goes or that's you know that's that all green song right there when the world has got you by your strings and you can't make sense of anything Nothing you have will soon Call on me to pull you through Cause there's one thing I'll never Is turn my back on you Turn my back on you
and I'll never turn my back on you. Turn my back on you. Haven't seen me in weeks, and you worry about how it's been. No, I'll always be a fool. Call on me to pull you through, 'cause there's one thing I never do: let's turn my back on you. In my eyes on you, I was so young. I didn't know what I was gonna do. Now I know I had to be with you. And whatever that meant at the time, sooner or later, yeah. Oh, I'd make it mine. Yes, I would. It's been so, so long. I think I know you. I know what's going on. You're moving on. Moving on, our time has come, babe. Our time has come. I know I, I can see.
Now you uh, won an award in Memphis, didn't you? Yeah, I uh, went uh, last year. I went to the International Blues Challenge, and uh, I competed uh, in the solo duo category, and I won the award for the best guitar player in the solo duo category. Cool. I was there with my friend Lucy, uh, Lucy Hammond, and mm. she, we're sitting next to each other, and and uh, they go, "We're representing the Ashland Blues Society." even though I live in Portland, and they go, from the Ashland Blues Society, and my thought process was, oh, somebody from Ashland made it to the finals? <laughs> like, I wonder who this is. Like, I wonder who, it, and I'm going through my head, I'm like, who are, how many people I know in Ashland? And I'm like, listening to all the guitar players, and then they, they say my name, and I'm like, oh, and then Lucy was like, if, I, if she wasn't there, I probably would've just sat there, but she was like, go up there, like, what are you doing, <laughs> stupid? Like, and uh, so I'm like, Okay, and so I'm walking up, and then I was like, "Oh, they're gonna want you to make a speech," and I'm like, "Wait, what am I gonna say?" <laughs> what am you're I still, say? you're still wondering who the who from Ashland was up yeah, there, right? right? Yeah. Like, what am I gonna say? So anyway, uh, Ben, uh, it's been great. You, you play, you know, great guitar, and but you also write great songs. I mean, good mm -hmm. voice. I mean, it's. You're the you're the full package, so it's a it's really an honor for you to been on the show. Um, how can people get in touch with you? Um, so my website is benricelive.com, and uh, I'm also on Facebook, and Instagram, and I'm on Twitter, but uh, I don't. I'm still trying to figure that out, <laughs> which is funny for a millennial. But um, yeah, on online at benricelive.com. And there, uh, all my shows are listed, mm -hmm. and there's photos and a bio, and you can uh, listen to my music, and then uh, on Facebook too. Great, it was great, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tom. And it was yeah. fun. It was fun. Big mistake. 
stick casting you from the pearly gates Cause the angels are fighting over you Took a true promise. 